Hello and welcome. I uh, just watched this talk by Sky Cooley, uh, geologist from Montana on Nick Zentner's channel about calcrete in eastern Washington at the geomorphic triple junction, which um, I'm not sure if he went into the triple junction very much. I think it was just like one slide. Mostly calcrete. Very interesting. Uh, so I found out unequivocally that there was another flood in the area. Like the Missoula flood is not all that's happened. It's actually the most recent flood. And this, this flooding has been going on for more like this kind of time frame. And he, he said, back to the Maya scene for some of the deposits. And I'm like, well, that's when the Columbia River Basalt Group is being formed and considered around most vigorous this, this time frame continued until six million years so like if we're finding calcite deposits in some other layer at that time frame of water based so we're seeing evidence of a flood of water based material that's depositing these layers or calcrete i keep saying calcite <laughs> calcrete The calcrete is being deposited, which pretty much, let's see what it is. Uh, hardened layer in or on the so soil of calcium rich dura crust. So basically, let's find some of the images. Calcrete requires long-term stability is one of the things you're saying. Also, he said it uh, tends to form at low points, like some relative to surroundings, not absolute low points, but probably there too, but relative to surroundings. Um, <clears throat> this was very interesting. I'm trying to think what to... So it's forming way back before the before the um, Missoula flood. This really, to me, shows a relationship to like the whole of it. The whole process was occurring as one process. It's not like it's not like then was the Columbia River basalt, and then this flood happened just about afterwards, and then that stopped. And then things were just hanging out for a while, and then this other flood happened. Like, it's all one process causing it all. And essentially, in different stages that are measurable, but still within one process. It's not like there are different events that are disconnected. It's literally the Columbia River basalt is flowing in and boiling the water and causing a, like encouraging water that's seeping into the top layers to evaporate so that it increases the evaporation rate by the presence of this hot magma generally speaking that's around like it's it's relevant and it, notably he said it decreases in the north and like the definition of calcrete depends on how thick you say it is and where it is depends on how thick you interpret it to be so like let's find his image the map notably um I believe, I guess it's, I thought this is, this is, I guess it's just elevation. I think it's thicker over here, and then it thins going up this way. If I remember exactly, although it may be more focused on, um, where did he say? On this area? Othello? 
Set Othello. Which is here. I'm, I had to like to find this map. It might be art pretty early. Uh, okay, there's that. He's just pointing out that there's things that are not really discussed. Like with most uh, most discussion of the floods in the region are really focused on here. It seems like just in the most recent time. But if you think about it, if this is all one process that's going on, and then it approaches what's still part of one process at the Missoula flood, like it's almost like it's slowing down, and the end of the process is like actually distinguishably more present than what was still a similar time frame like it wasn't like suddenly millions of years this is this is just lack of like accounting for details with radiometric dating that leads to things of that nature but it's actually much more like squished time than realized because it was the ex rapid expansion of the earth and the earth doesn't function under plate tectonics I shouldn't even explain that anymore because if people hear it the first time, it's like, what the fuck? And if people are listening, I don't really need to explain it. Or if they just know. Pardon me. Okay, here we go. Maybe here. This was very interesting. What do we see? Oh, I hear voices. I might get called. What do we see? Calcrete, so, so all of this is calcrete, the yellow, I guess. And then an aquifer was here, or, or is it underneath here? Oh, it is underneath here. Is that what that is? Whoa. Sorry, I just yelled hello. <laughs> okay, but this line. This line. Now it goes up further. It goes up further than what I drew here. But there's things that I've realized since then. So, we got this boundary here. Calcrete is pretty much on this side. Not on this side. So that's interesting. That's kind of notable. That it, it certainly is related to the process here. because of the divide, literally. Also, it's over here, so there's a current flowing up this way, generally speaking, up here. Coming out here, going, I'm pretty sure it literally erupted out of the region that the crust broke when the bonds broke between Papua New Guinea that was there this segment literally was there and it broke the bond between uh, Baja California and Papua New Guinea here at Solomon Islands which then literally it it looks like if I like if we get these labels out of here if it goes up here like it literally looks like this stuff went this way this stuff went this way, generally speaking, and it went here and divided and wrapped around this way and flows up this way. So if we go back here, it flows up this way. And then this is very closely related to the shape of the ammonite that's f spiraling here, this ammonite. 
spiraling energy that's forming the Colorado Plateau. So we got that. And then there's the region of Bondville flood here, the Columbia Snake River area. <clears throat> and then these other ones probably just indicate places that really had a large amounts of water that also had large amounts of heat exchange. Like there wasn't uh, these flows of hot magma beneath the crust while wow, there were flows of hot of water above maybe like over here there's water but maybe it's just like different circumstances where it's more cold based i'm not sure what exactly is driving this or even chemical based like it's separated across a boundary that occurs that literally separates materials in a way that leads to more calcrete here than here. So I pulled up a map of the Earth. <clears throat> calcrete on Earth. I guess we can't click that one, but I think this is calcrete. Calcrete uranium deposits. Probably good enough because it basically has that map there. But then it has all of the Sahara, as well as a little bit of Spain. And then um, all of this region where like flooding occurred, and, like definitely water flowed through this way, across this way, and out here. So there's water there. There's water flowing over here. There's magma flowing underneath the crust, the hot magma that's flowing and exchanging heat into the water to like and to basically just encourage the process. It's like a catalyst. Here we go. The triple junction. So he said Scablands, the Yakima Fold region, which is this pink region and then the Laos region. So Scablands are, are water-based, Laos is wind-based, and then uh, pink is tectonics-based, so not flood or wind. At this triple junction location here, basically where all three of them overlap, so like around here, maybe this whole area, <clears throat> but where is this? Got this here, got this here. About halfway into the state. Right, I'm just trying to make sure we... About halfway in from this one. So like, pretty much here. So it's basically around here, this segment that this shape is happening at, going up. Where there's a triple junction of these three things. So we got this current coming up here that then is holding a boundary Here's that current. So we got one current up here that's kind of protruding up in there, protruding this way. So I, kind of, I, I essentially didn't know where to draw this, so I just left it like that. So that's part of why it looks like that. But maybe it did go all the way up into there, because if you look at this shape, it's kind of like that point. So like this here is probably an undercurrent relative to here that's flowing up this way and then flowing underneath this region creating the fold belt region of the Yakima, Yakima fold belt 
and then the um, channeled scab lands is where the ammonite is this circle boundary that basically goes around here up here and then over here's the nucleus here and atop it here this way and just is this big circle ammonite though like a subtle one this one's much more pronounced but it's still doing the same thing so it's got the ammonite structure that overlays the protruding structure from flowing up the up north american west coast region up through here up through the great basin or basin and range keep saying Great Basin. It's probably also the Great Basin, but I think Great Basin might be a specific spot. As far as the wind, bl wind blown, I don't know what to make of it. It's pretty comparable to the flood range, just like extended more. Kind of makes me think of, honestly, it makes me think of this. Let's, let's see. This region, where there's the ammonite here. But then it has like the extended region over here. It's got a base protruding region and then this like valve or something. And then uh, or gasket, some kind of like chamber between this region and this region. Kind of rem reminiscent of how this, I guess it's not doing that. But it's got that thing. Hmm, maybe it's doing that in combination with that. Like there. It's not quite as defined as that, where this doesn't have any like little thing coming in there. This thing. This whale that's like... Blowhole spouting. Blah. But yeah, I mean, as soon as I saw this, I was like, well, I can explain this bank region real f immediately, immediately. And the the water really, it really shows that they're tied, the timing. like that, it, <clears throat> The Missoula flood, to disconnect it from the other floods that are also present, is basically a choice because of radiometric dating. But they're all the same fucking flood, dudes. <laughs> you know, the Great Flood, the Flood. <laughs> okay, what else did I write down? Yeah, that's all, that's all I wrote down, pretty much. <clears throat> what was he saying? Let's see, here's some examples. Ancient flood gravel. So this is one of those floods. And then a deposit of this calcrete. So mind you, this calcrete is thicker earlier. It really made me think of, like, an ammonite being formed in layers, like a 3D printer that just deposits layers and maybe etches layers too. The acid deposits, it etches and, like, kind of like a <clears throat> sculptor maybe will deposit a portion of the sculpture and then etch it and then maybe add some more to the sculpture and then etch it something of that nature i mean i'm not <clears throat> just basically putting layers down where then like certain aspects so my thought is because there's calcrete forming over here 
Like, especially... Let me find that map again. Like, the local one. He's got a local one somewhere. <clears throat> Othello, so it's really heavily around the left, or the right eye, I guess. Left eye from here, right eye of the face, of the somber face. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. But it stayed out of those regions. That's interesting. Othello. Oh, hello. This way. I guess it just stayed out of the highest terrain here. <clears throat> I got it. I thought I had a topographical map open. Not distinguished enough. Gotta zoom in so far to get any distinguishing. is like mm, up there hmm let's zoom in or do this I mean <clears throat> It looks like we can see the line here. And then it's like it exits this way, fans out to like a certain boundary here. Exits here. Exits here. Like in these straight lines out to, through the, into and through the mountains. Exits this way exits this way but like it's creating quite straight segments like there That's so cool. Yeah. 
Okay, I think I'm just gonna pause and be done for now. I'll be I'll be back. That's what I got that's all I got pretty much anyway, so before I just sit around researching. Um I think just that triple junction alone and these two these two images are very applicable to my research before I like it's not like I saw this stuff. Oh yeah, it reminds me. That does remind me. I'm not I, before I forget. I gotta record this. <clears throat> so recently we've been talking about the eyeball snake eyes, which also someone disliked. Rude. Got zero zero likes, one dislike it. Cuts me inside, dudes. <laughs> uh, not to complain anyway. Snake eye, snake eye, with this snake head here. I'm like, dude, this is fire, bro. Noobs. And then the nose here with a chin here. So we got those two snakes. The snake coming this way, and then the head coming off of the snake. <clears throat> but if we keep going up this way, like this current, as I mentioned in the previous one, Snake Eyes, I believe, runs to here, and then it kind of fades. It continues over here, but it fades in this region, <clears throat> which is suggestive it drained this way. Like, energy went through here. So if we just kind of look at it and zoom out a bit... Over here, we did this thing where we saw this eye, and we saw the shape of the eye, and compared it to this one, and then from there, we're able to actually spot a nostril, like a shape, that then has a current, and a current as a boundary to the shape. <clears throat> so, I, 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 that's what I'm getting at zoom out further where I like so there's basically there's an ammonite here spinning there's another ammonite spinning here of water water spinning here water spinning here so between them they're creating a boundary up the, not just here and bending to this one but actually up even further where this spout and over here as well like it's coming this way is like a main current across this width so it doesn't have to actually like go cut through the mountains but it's also cutting through the mountains so it's got a one current here and then an, another current here acting as like a main current and a rece dominant recessive current in terms of just the flow like the sh volume of flow rate maybe not the like <clears throat> the the volume of flow not the flow rate itself so it's probably more like peacefully flowing through this wide region than it is through this narrow channel so it flows through here enough though to create an eyeball and a mouth that then has another chin down to the other current in this region po possibly the whole of this is like a chin to up here even maybe in a way uh, but probably more so like the this coloration that then comes down here, maybe maybe a, a nostril. I don't I don't know. I haven't looked for like a nostril per se. <clears throat> but then like it gushes this way, generally speaking, through here, and just runs into resistance. And so this whole stretch has water involved too. So that kind of leads me to this. So as the water approaches the undercurrents that are flowing in here and then and then flowing through here to Yellowstone and just filling this region uh, generally around Bighorn Mountain. Where is it? Bighorn Mountain right here. This is Bighorn Mountain's undercrust area. Like what's this is what's supporting Bighorn Mountain is a mountain itself down to the mantle pretty much that then has a ring around it like this. So this area acts as a chamber for this magma flowing in this way that then like fills there to then flow over to Yellowstone. 
and then when it flows to Yellowstone, like the reason Yellowstone is able to exist is because this support structure here is just like hanging out like a, so it, it's like come be beneath my wing kind of thing, Yellowstone. So it supports it beneath it, the wing, but then it like this region too has area for this hot mantle magma to flow, but then there's kind of a boundary here. So it limits it to a degree as well. This is uh, where the Rockies go to here, like down here. So it's over here. Let's get a maybe like right here 47 112 just to get an idea of where that is here to compare maybe i'll do it that way i don't know what that was i'll just do it again 47 point or no yeah 47.23 let's see if we're in at least okay 47.23 95.8 so it's even all the way to like this boundary maybe maybe even with a chin or a a bridge and then like a nostril Ninety seven or ninety six point one four forty two point forty two point six six. What was it? Nine, minus ninety five point nine one. Let's see where this is. Ninety seven point one four. kind of position relative to this here. Maybe there's like a nostril here. <clears throat> it kind of looks like a nostril. Like that one. So maybe the bridge of the nose is actually down this way. Like it goes like this. And then maybe uh, maybe across here even. I don't know why. But um, having a brow like up here somewhere. That reminds me also. This here comes out this way, goes this way. This goes out this way and then goes down here. But mind you, this region is attached here. So when this goes down, it actually starts to go into South America here. So like water is gushing this way, shoving into this even as part of the current pushing into it. I mean, maybe it's even like heavily water-based and just flowing with vigor enough to move earth um and moving earth and all of it contributing to shaping it just so much energy that but water involved in like a flood type setting that it flows over here and then basically runs into resistance that it's pushing into and then ends up flowing through here so if that's the case and we go back to this Calcrete map. Isn't it interesting that that's what's going on here? 
Like it's like it deflects two ways and then it comes down here. Who knows here, but then possibly cuts across here to then like and we need the other map, this one. say cross this way which was then attached near here but possibly into here to then flow like around here and basically depositing the ice what would become the ice and then possibly across here though into Australia just based on that map this like somehow it's getting to Australia Possibly by just being adjacent, like this current comes down this way, runs into here and atop Australia, like across that way, create possibly relating to the ocean there, uh, or this, the deposits there, this stuff. Like coming across this way. from deflecting here and going over. Because Australia, like Papua New Guinea's corner's there. This is Australia's corner over here in this area. Although I can't quite find it on this map. Honestly, it might be literally right here is why. Or somewhere like within where it's not visible. Because this is visible here, like how where it damaged the land, but here maybe it didn't like actually sever it. I don't know. It's pretty it's pretty big. <laughs> but anyway, it went from northeast Australia to southeast Australia along this line. So this current that bends this way like would have probably swept across Australia as well. So it would have probably just gone, gone across this way. So maybe it actually went that way to Antarctica. And then this way across into this region and po possibly also Antarctica. this way I was thinking it just runs into resistance but maybe this has like a current that steeps, keeps going through this way I don't know where this is coming from I was thinking literally the Tarim Basin <laughs> but not to say that's the case, but it, se it seems pretty, pretty assuredly coming across this way, generally. So it probably did more so come from somewhere over here. Possibly this went more directly into this region than I am able to tell. Um, trying to think. Let's see, let's pull up. Okay, okay, some research snippets, and then, what was I pulling out? Oh, yeah, it's in here. This. So if it like goes this way, this is not, it's too, too long ago, too long ago. We need this one, maybe, no. Nope. 
There's the IAP, it is starting to open. A current flow. Coming out of that bond breaking. Slamming into North America there. And South America. I just don't think this map is quite right. It's just too long ago. Like, there's a period where things moved and then re-established new connections to the point where this bond happened. Like, it, it, it's not that the imagery is... Like, this is probably true. I don't want to say it's not true because it's probably actually true in terms of general positionings. Uh, this is a pretty expansion Earth map. But it's just not capturing that this bond formed over here. It, like, it shows it up here, but it really what happened is it got pushed by a current up here, flowing this way. That is what got squeezed here and forced across this way. But it, went, it was flowing this way, pushing against the whole of everything in that region until it physically turned enough to then rebond at a different position and then it bonded down here with uh along this whole length pretty much hmm. did it bond or did it get bonded to Possibly it got bonded too by the current flows involved in this process, like reestablishing a connection between them. But then that bond broke, and that's when the KT boundary happened. Hmm. It's almost like it moved Australia out of the way and started to form the Pacific Place Plate, the Western Pacific Plate, this section. Not to call it a plate, but it is a good term to describe it, even though plate tectonics is false. <laughs> uh, it's, but just started to form it like here. I guess underneath Australia for a time. It probably... If we could like strip away the totality of these currents and then one by one reinsert them, we could probably decipher the motions of Australia and at all from over here more precisely because this current is probably involved in all of it like it just moves it over here so it's definitely over here and then moved and then this space open between the two <clears throat> another snake out here also by the way I've been calling that the eye I wonder if it has a, also another snakehead is Africa and South America. Also, Beetlejuice is 156% its normal brightness according to whatever, they, whatever their normal brightness like line is. I guess I'll just open another map. What am I doing? I've talked about this in the past, though, where the South America, or Africa, is like the upper portion of the skull, let's say. Like, it's it's the skull with the eyeball here, and maybe a nostril somewhere. I wouldn't say necessarily there. Maybe, maybe something, one of those. But then with the jawbone of South America, 
that have since separated, but initially they just opened. Let's, let's see if that's true. Let me pull up slides. Slides. Pardon me. I think... Well, it's one of these. We'll chat. We'll see. I got a paper in here somewhere that I referenced. That shows. I think it's the other one that shows the opening of South America from Africa. Da -da -da. There it is. No, that's not it. Oh, this is nice to notice right now, though. Kind of just shows how the Northern Pacific was totally, or Northern North America was totally different. Here's that channel though that's closing closing so like this is KT boundary time frame not sure here we see it there's there's the much more snake head like with the eyeball and then opening opening separating becoming separate systems and now the the mouth is just wide open. I wonder if snakes do. How wide can a snake open its mouth? How or maybe how can the snake open? like is their lower jaw fully detached? Loosely connected. Let's say biology. <laughs> I guess that's... Snake's head walks forward in a side-to-side -side motion. I don't know. I was just thinking maybe... <laughs> Each mandible is attached by a stretchy ligament. What is a mandible? That's not its like... some of these images are <laughs> going into this dangerous territory of looking at things people might not want to look at although that's pretty much all that comes from this corner I guess <laughs> loosely da, da, da. okay I mean uh, that's interesting I'd say Possibly something related to what's going on here, where it's like loosely connected now. Possibly attempting to eat Antarctica somehow. <laughs> it's trying to eat the pole, maybe.
Snake eating the tail. Snake eating the pole. This is from, uh, I guess I can't, can't see it, that's not it. This paper is Southern, South Atlantic Paleobathymetry since early Cretaceous by Lucia Perez Diaz and Graham Ingalls, Eagles, Eagles, Graham, see, Graham, just thinking Graham. Okay, see you guys later.